What's going on guys? Welcome to the Hustle or Stay Basic channel, the Invest or Stay Basic segment. I'm your host KG and as always we're going to be taking a look at a company, uh, find out how they make money, uh, the current valuation, analyst estimates, and my final thoughts. Shout out to Malur Wahid for recommending this company. So today we are going to look at Good Food. So let's get into that. So Good Food, ticker symbol food, or GDDF on the New York Stock Exchange trading for a market cap of $629 million and a share price of $8.66. This is a home meal delivery company. Uh, it's growing incredibly fast and it's really has the best market conditions for its growth uh, due to this pandemic. Another good reason to look at this company is it is down 25% year to date. So maybe we can buy on a dip, uh, but also it is up 150%, 157% over the last 12 months. So like I said, the stock's done well, um, but since 2021, it has taken a dip. All right, so let's go learn a little bit more about Good Food. So I got a little blurb here. Good Food Market Corp is an online grocery company, delivers fresh meals and grocery products in Canada. The company offers ready to eat and breakfast meals, which includes ready to blend smoothies and other breakfast items, um, some salads, some soups and private label grocery items. They are based in St. Laurent, Canada, which is in Quebec. Okay, so basically they're sending you ingredients and recipes for easy to cook meals straight to your door and they got options for you know low carb and vegetarian so i mentioned they're growing fast let's take a quick look at their sales yeah so definitely some fast growth they did 285 million dollars in 2020 you know that's up 120 million from 2019 so the pandemic has definitely helped them out but even so you can see pre-pandemic they were growing as well which is really good another thing that's good to see is they're consistently in the 80 90 million dollar range uh, per quarter and actually reported 91 million uh, in q1 2021 so you know they're having a good start to 2021 as well while you know most canadians are kind of locked down and not having a great start to 2021 okay so how does this all work so i got this funny title here they are hoping to get you hooked so when I go on the site, I'm like, okay, damn, you know, we got six servings because three recipes, um, two servings. That's like to me, six servings if I'm ordering for myself uh, for $27.58. But, you know, you'll see the average Joe who doesn't have these promotions or coupons is actually spending $82.74 a week. Uh, for me, that's pretty significant for six meals. So that will basically come up to $320 a month for 12 days worth of dinner. Not every meal of the day, just dinner. So that to me sounds a little bit pricey, but you know, I think they'll get you hooked with offering you coupons every now and then. So I was on the site reading, you know, for research purposes for you guys. And uh, two minutes in, they're like, boom, you've got eight free meals, claim them before they're gone. And it got me intrigued. You know, if I wasn't doing research, I might've been like, huh, you know, eight free meals, mm, kind of bored of cooking my own crap. Uh, might do this so i do like their marketing and i think it's very similar to uber eats where you know i take it personally i take advantage of their coupons that i get every week i'm like hey 40 percent off why not why not and then one week where i don't have a coupon i'm already used to ordering uber eats every week i'm like you know what yolo let me just pay the delivery fee let me just pay full price um you know let me pay 12 bucks for a burger or something like that and i think they have that same marketing strategy as well. So coming from that last slide, I mean, they are definitely getting people hooked. If you take a look at their 2019, say Q2 uh, active subscribers, we have 159,000 members. And Q1 2021, we have 306,000 active sub subscribers. So that's really good. Another cool thing that I noticed is their gross margin has been increasing. And if, if you're not familiar with gross margin, uh, I put the formula here for you. Net sales minus cost of goods and services. So cost of goods would be, you know, the packaging, the actual meats and vegetables and the delivery. So the gross margins are really good at 32%. Okay, so growing subscriber base, uh, growing revenue, growing gross margin, all good things. Um, what is... Their goal what is good foods goal so i have this blurb here from their management discussion analysis report it says the company's continued focus on a strategy to become 
Canada's leading online grocer. Now that that's a big goal, and they say they're going to do that by increasing its product offering and flexibility for members through same day delivery. Um, and that's th- those th- those are some big goals. And when I when I think about competition for good foods, I'm thinking like Walmart, Sobeys. I mean, Loblaw. You know, I a shareholder of Loblaw, but uh, I th- I'm thinking about all these grocery chains. But uh, I, I I think their idea is pretty cool. They kind of are saying forget about thinking about what you want to buy at the grocery store because when I go to a grocery store, I'm putting together a list like, okay, I need eggs, I need oh, wraps to make the egg wraps, oh, and I need spinach. Whereas they're like, here, here's the eggs, here's the spinach, here's the wraps. Like, don't even think about that. Uh, just make it. And I think uh, there's some people that will find value in that for sure. Okay, let's talk valuation. When we're talking valuation with a growth stock, I mean, you throw out items like PE ratio and traditional measures right out the window and personally I, I feel the best way to measure a growth stock is comparing it to other companies that are out there and what their current valuation is and the company I picked is Instacart and I mean you at home if you're doing a valuation you could pick another company but I thought Instacart was uh, was a pretty good comparison company to use if you're not familiar with Instacart they basically get their revenue and sales through delivery fees uh, they have shoppers that will go into Walmart, Sobeys, you know, blah, blah, wherever, and actually do the shopping for you based on your list, and you'll be hit with a delivery fee. So they're tackling online groceries in a different way than good food, but I think they're both fighting in that same industry. So that's why I'm using them as the company to compare. So based on that, like I got, I got a bunch of things here. I mean, look, look at Instacart's valuation. Today, they're saying it's $39 billion dollars. Mind you, um, Instacart is not publicly traded. They are going to be publicly traded in 2021, but they're saying their valuation today is $39 billion. They did $1.5 billion of sales and they have about, you know, I think probably 10 million users. Comparing that to Good Food, Good Food has, like we saw, 300,000 subscribers, uh, which is, you know, a tenth of what uh, Instacart had in 2017 but they do uh, almost $300 million of sales, which you know is in that 2016, 2015 range. And if you look at that 2016 valuation for Instacart, that's $2 billion. And Good Food is trading at a valuation of $600 million Canadian. I think this is probably a US dollar valuation as well. So factoring in that Good Food is growing and they have $300 million sales and you know a 10th of the users as Instacart, and Instacart had like, let's say two and a half billion Canadian dollar valuation. I think it's not far fetched to say good food should have a billion dollar valuation. Um, now <laughs> with these growth stocks, there's, there's not much uh, setting a margin of safety and stuff like that, uh, which kind of takes value investors right out of the picture. But I, I personally think $1 billion isn't far fetched uh, for a valuation for good food, which you know, would give it 40% upside from its valuation today. But let's see what the analysts are saying. So the analysts are actually more bullish than me. They they think there's 68% upside from the current valuation. Uh, That would put it over a billion dollars market cap. They're saying, hey, Good Foods is probably going to do $380 million of sales in 2021 and go all the way up to $480 million worth of sales in 2022. Now, personally, this is reassuring to me because what I like to do is I like to do my own thinking, my own valuation, and then see what analysts are thinking. Um, I mean, there's a really good chance that both of us could be way off and both wrong. Uh, but I think $1 billion is uh, is not far-fetched at all. It's, it, it's, uh, it's actually probably reasonable. So let me quickly share my final thoughts now. So Canada, where Good Food operates, has, let's say, roughly 38 million uh, people living there. Is it crazy to assume 3% of all Canadians use online uh, meal delivery service like Good Food, uh, you know, over the next 10 years? Is, is that far-fetched? And personally, I just, I don't think that's too far-fetched. You know, I, I, I can think of 3% of people, like three people out of every 100 that are like, I don't want to decide what my grocery list is. I just want to buy it, make it, and get on with it. So, I mean, based on that, if, if I use that 3% number, we're looking at 1.14 million customers. And remember, Good Food has uh, about 300,000 subscribers today. So using that rationale, there's like a 3x potential for this company of growth over the next 10 years. 
Um, and that's not factoring in things like inflation, which will increase grocery costs and stuff like that. Um, so really, really cool company to take a look at. I hope you guys found value in this video. If you did, subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment. Tell me if you use good food and tell me why you like it. I'd love to hear more about uh, good food users. Uh, but this is a spec play growth stock uh, with some pretty good upside. But I'm just going to sit this one out. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Bye.